Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Department Podcast. Stephen Clark with Stephen Bologna, Joe Palantonio, and Jesse Norman all here to give our betting knowledge, our predictions, and we're just going to break down all the games for week 15 of the NFL season. But before we get into all those games, fellas, how are you doing today? Doing well. Excited to be here. Good. Steve, how much uh, snow melted over there? Any you guys? Literally, still, uh, literally zero. No now snow. There's more snow. There's more snow than when there's they started. There's more snow now. They started blowing it around. Now there's more. <laughs> Steve, how much did you get over there? Up there? 40, 44 inches. It's bad. Wow. They, this is like the most they have ever That's gotten. That's the size the of a small one, person. The one week I have showed up here, and yeah. this has to happen. <laughs> Oh man! Imagine, oh. imagine working on the upstate New York equivalent of the Parkway at that moment. Oh man, he, he, J- Justin would still be working at to this hour right now if he worked up there. But yeah. um, uh, I'm guessing everyone else is doing pretty good, besides the fact that Steve got 44 inches of snow over there. But we're not here to talk about snow. We're here to talk about football. And uh, just a quick oh, reminder. Really? I, was, yeah. I was here to talk about snow. Uh, I'm now. I'll see my way out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jesse, uh, good. Nice knowing you. Um, but this is a betting podcast, Joe. Just so you know, uh, betting addiction is real. So if you have a problem with that, go to the hotline, call the number. We're not trying to get you guys to bet. It's all. <laughs> hey, do, you, do you do this every time? Do you do that every time? I don't do this podcast. Justin usually is in <laughs> Justin charge. Does. But it, it, it's a real thing. People lose their house. They lose their cars over betting. So it, it, we're not forcing people to bet here. It's just, Michael you know, Jordan got kicked out of the league for two years. There you go. You know? Don't get kicked out. Look, look, look at Craig Carton. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Back. So betting is a real addiction. Get help if you have problems with it. But anyways, um, I'm just going to go down the order that's on my screen right here. And the top is Stephen Bologna. So, Steve, you're the first wow. pick up this week. Oh, man. Where do I go? Okay. Whew. I know we have a couple Saturday games this week, which is cool. Uh, I X them out just because yeah, I'm not sh- sure when this is getting uploaded for sure. It might I be think- Sunday morning. It might be late on Saturday. So, yeah, I think this- it's cool that we finally have some s- Saturday football. But I'm going to keep it in the Sunday slate here. I'm okay. going to start off with uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons plus six, 49 and a half is the over. It should be a pretty easy game for the Buccaneers. It's a division game, um, so that's something to look out for. I, I think the Buccaneers are just far and a better, far and away better than the Falcons. They Falcons, they, they're already looking ahead to next season. Um, Buccaneers should easily win this one by by over six, barring a garbage time score. And the over, I would take the over, both of these teams. uh, You know, obviously the Falcons have a very poor defense. I think the Buccaneers can put up 30-plus. And the Falcons have a somewhat capable offense, uh, except Matt Ryan. I don't like Matt Ryan anymore to put up Mm -hmm. 20-plus. I don't like Matt Ryan. He lost lost me my fantasy game. And Jonathan Taylor Clark, so screw him too. Yeah, um, Steve and I both both took a big loss in fantasy the last two weeks. Um to the same guy who auto drafted and didn't pay attention to mm. the, the league once this whole season. So it was kind of hurt both of us there, but no, I, I, I agree with you here at Tampa Bay um, minus six. They're just a the better team overall. They're not that good of a team, but they're the better team. They're better than Atlanta for sure. Um, I, I, I liked everything you said there, Steve. Yeah. Uh, I like the over the most out of anything here. I think divisional games are tough and Atlanta could pull within a garbage time touchdown. Uh, So I would have the, I would favor more the over than taking Tampa on the spread. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to take the under. Um, I I, I think that the Bucks offense the last week against the Vikings showed some, some serious holes, uh, some serious flaws. The run game has not been, has not been where it is. Um, And when you're looking at the Falcons, they're one of the worst red zone teams in the national football league. Um, the Buccaneers red zone defense has been outstanding uh, consistently that combination. I don't think we're going to see a lot of points from either of them. I can see um, maybe the Bucks scratching across a couple quick touchdowns, but beyond that, I think it might just be a game of clock management. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that too, but um, on to me now. Um, I'm going to take this to new Orleans and we have the chiefs and the saints the Chiefs are favored by minus three in the spread. Um, I'm, I'm taking that minus three. I think the Chiefs put down the Saints pretty, 
not easily, but we don't know what we're expecting from the Saints. We know Drew Brees is back, but we don't know how he's going to perform because he was injured for a long time with his ribs and his lungs and all that nonsense. It's hard to come back from that in a season, and he came back in the season, so uh, props to him. But the Chiefs are just the best team in football. Um, the, the Saints are hot and cold, even though they're – they um they lost they did have a, a loss to the Eagles last week and I'm gonna take the over on this too just because the Chiefs and if the Chiefs just put up 30 points all the Saints have to do is put up another 20 and they almost have the over right there so I'm taking the Chiefs minus three and the over in this one. Yeah, I know I like the Chiefs minus three. If um Drew Brees is playing, this is a different uh, story. But with Taysom Hill in at quarterback, he's playing a not so easy defense to go up against. They're going to try to establish the run early. I think the Chiefs are going to know to shut down the run early. Um, if you're telling me I get Patrick Mahomes or Taysom Hill and the Chiefs only need to win by three, yeah, I'm taking the Chiefs by three. Um, so I, I, it was announced today that Breeze was playing, yes. I believe. Yes. Um, oh, he's hurt. That... He's hurt. There's no way he's lasting that full game. I agree with that. I think there's, there's no be way reps. There's going to be reps. I agree. I think, I think he'll still going to take like 10 to 15, maybe 20 snaps. I'm going to operate under the assumption that it's all going to like that. He's, he's okay. clear to play. Yeah. Um, and I do think that the saints could exploit uh, some of the, the chief's weaknesses. Um, they are great at getting pressure. I think true breeze has become even better at getting rid of it quickly. Um, Alvin Kamara is going to be back into the fold in a big time way. I think the Saints could put up uh, a lot of points against Kansas City. I think we're going to see a lot of quick plays to Alvin and maybe even to Taysom because they're still going to have to work him in the fold. It really is about, is Patrick Mahomes going to make mistakes um, like he did against Miami? I I could see um, a situation where Mahomes is under pressure and he makes either one of those big sacks that he's been known, you know, to take like 20, 30 yards gets dropped back late in the game. It's going to be close. It's really going to be close, but I think the saints, I'm going to pick the saints. Um, yeah. And just cause I want to be the only one. I got you on that, but um, I like the point you made with um, the, if they make a stupid mistake, the chiefs, because the dolphins aren't the saints. I don't feel like the chiefs can come back against the Saints like they did against the Dolphins. I know they're known for coming back in the playoffs with Houston and the Super Bowl and all that, but I just feel like the Saints are a little different that way. So if they do get behind, I think the Saints actually might have it locked up. But Steve, your prediction for this one? So I, if, you, if you're betting anything on this, bet in Alvin Kamara, money, uh, anytime touchdown scorer. I think with Drew Brees, Alvin Kamara is a, a different force. He's an unstoppable player. And Drew Brees back this week the offense should kind of get back to that putting up 25, 30 points a game. I think this is going to be a, a nail biter down to the wire. At the same time, I think the saints should try and ease in drew Brees. I mean, the guy did break half his ribs uh, hmm. and it, it's not easy just to come back from that and be 100%. But, but if I had to pick this one, I think the chiefs and their high powered offense, they, they should be able to get the job done. Yeah. Um, all right. So that does it for two games so far. And now we're on to Joe for his first pick of the day. First pick of the day. Um, we're going to make it a little easier. Um, I don't know why this game was on Monday Night Football. Uh, we're going to go um, Steelers Bengals. Um, right. uh, look, the Steelers are coming off a two game losing streak. Um, their first two losses of the year, obviously. The Bengals are decimated right now. The Bengals are um, playing some of the worst football in the league. The Steelers are going to be able to do a lot of things that they were not able to do against the football team and against the Bills, like run the football. Um, this is a great opportunity uh, for them to get back in the rhythm of actually, you know, catching a pass here and there and um, run blocking, which are things that they just have not been doing. Um, this, I really think that the Steelers are going to win, win big. Uh, give me them with the points. Is it? Is this yes. even a game here? I mean, uh, yeah. I don't even know who's starting for the the Bengals. If it's still Brandon I Allen, assume that Brandon Allen. Yeah. Yikes! I mean, it Steelers. Th this is a good game for the Steelers though, to kind of get their their minds back get back on track at a big a, a good win, a little bit of momentum heading towards the playoffs. Uh, and, and for the Bengals, just pray for Joe Burrow to get back quick. Jesse, anything on this for your Steelers? I mean, 
I I don't necessarily love the points because two touchdowns is hard, but the Bengals are not good, and the Cowboys ran up a lot of points on them. So you got to feel like <laughs> Pittsburgh wants to. Um, ben always beats up on Cincinnati, and he always beats up on Cleveland every year. Um, so no, I would I would take the Steelers on on the spread because the Bengals are. Yeah, they're really like they're right now they're worse than the Jaguars, even though they have a better record because of Burrow. They they're down there like with the Jets on like the level of how bad they are playing. Yeah, no, I agree with all three of you guys on this one. This is Steelers kind of got lucky in a way with this one because yes, they had back to back losses, but they finally have like a game where they can regroup and assess everything and just get a nice dominant one here. Um, I, I don't like the spread, honestly. I like you said, Jesse, too. I for two touchdowns is a lot. It could be a 10 point game. It could be a 12, 11, 12. It could be something like that. So I wouldn't take the spread with that one, but um, no Steelers with the easy victory here. And we're going to continue with Jesse for his first pick of the day. Now. All right. Um, let me see here. Um, one that I'm interested in is Texans Colts yes. uh, Colts by seven and a half. Um, over under 51. I like the Texans to cover here because mm-hmm. it's a divisional game. The Texans have the unquestioned best player on the field at the most important position. Mm-hmm. Um, and while I think Indy is going to run the ball a lot on them and put up a good amount of points, I think Houston is going to be able to stay in it just enough. I think the Colts win. But plus seven and a half, I think the Texans can easily, easily lose by seven, but still cover the spread. 100%, 100% agree with that. It, it's it's the divisional game. What, what else can you say about that? They always play each other really hard. Um, I agree with, again, everything you just said there. Um, the Texans will cover that, but the Colts will wind up winning that just because of the overall team that Houston has compared to Indianapolis. And like I agree with the Deshaun Watson take too. He's the best player on the field on out of both teams. Um, but Colts to win, but Texans will cover the spread. These, um, these two teams, they just faced uh, two weeks ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and Colts pulled out the victory 26 to 20. Uh, I expect the same result here. The Colts coming off a dominant win off of uh, against a, a Raiders team that is, you know, it's solid. It's not terrible. Um, and, and this is a game for the Colts that they need. They want to win this division still, and their playoff hopes are still up for grabs. So I think they're going to come out firing big, big division game for them. At the same time, like you said, Jesse, Deshaun Watson is good for 20-plus points on offense. So if this Texans defense can somewhat hold up, they might have a chance. But if I had to choose, I would take the Colts. And honestly, I think I'm going to go with the under on this one. I I think uh, both defenses kind of step up here. I think this is a game that, like, the Colts are going to be in control of majority of the game, even if the score is kind of close. I think they're just going to be able to continue to just run the clock run the ball over and over because Houston has like the 31st ranked rush defense Literally in the NFL. Sports. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. like bottom two in the, in the NFL for rush defense. And th- so they're missing a lot of guys too on both sides of the ball, which sucks. But Joe, any thoughts on this game? That's exactly where I was going. Um, last week uh, we saw Jonathan Taylor really break <laughs> out and yep. we saw, <laughs> we saw the Colts run game really break out and they are licking their chops right now um, at this, at this Texans defense. It's, I, I think, I think the Colts are going to cover um, easy, easy win. I think Clark, you are going to have one of the most stress-free Sunday afternoons that you have ever had. That'd be nice because we play the Steelers next week and that's going to be very yeah. stressful. <laughs> um, but uh, that, that's for round one. Up back to Steve for his second pick of the day. All right, let's do it. We're heading over to the Washington football team stadium. Oh, with baby. Field. Nice. Seattle nice. coming into town. Washington is plus six. 44 and a half is the over. Hammer this under here. Dwayne Haskins is starting for Washington, and he is hot garbage. I cannot see him putting up more than 14 points for this offense unless the defense is able to score touchdowns. I really – this this defense, I feel so bad for them because every single week they are asked to make 20-plus stops uh, on drives. And last week against the 49ers, they came out with a huge win because of the defense. But I think they're finally – I think they're getting tired and – I'm kind of scared that 
Philly is going to come back and win this division. I, I have a gut feeling. I, I don't know why I could see Washington and the Giants losing out and Philly getting that week 17 win against Washington. But nevertheless, I think Seattle in this game, a lot of people are picking Washington, but Dwayne Haskins starting really changes things. And I, I, I think the Seahawks do win by a touchdown. I think it's a low scoring game. That's why I'm going to take the under. I think both defenses are, are going to hold their own. But at this point, you have Russ, best player on the field, and he's going to try and get back on this MVP train. Yeah, um, Dwayne Haskins starting really, uh, really throws me on the Seahawks bandwagon here. Um, I, if it wasn't, if it was Alex Smith, I think there's an argument to be had that um, the Washington football team plus six and a half is a fantastic bet. But with Dwayne Haskins, I, everything Steve said is right. Uh, hammer the under. I would take the Seahawks on the spread or Seahawks on the money line isn't a bad bet either um, to just have that because I think it's more of a lock game. There's, I think, of like a 5% chance that Haskins and Washington beat Seattle at this point. Yeah, it's slim. Jesse, I'm going to one-up you on that one. Um, you said that uh, Washington could cover the spread if Alex Smith was playing. I probably would have picked Washington to win this game. Washington to win. Yeah. yeah. No, they're, you could argue that they've been the better team lately. I yeah. agree. Hard, within the last two to three weeks, they literally have been the better team beating – the top well, okay, the, the Seahawks league. played the Jets one week, so you can't you can't we can't yeah, talk true, about that. True, <laughs> but still, the Seahawks are finally it looks like maybe getting back on track. I still don't know, but um, if Dwayne Haskins playing, which is horrible for Washington, I'm taking Seattle all the way here. No, absolutely, and no Antonio Gibson is another big hit for them yeah, right. as well. Um, I mean, this is this is a team uh, as great and as much as we can rave about the Washington defense. Um, they do not match up well, I think, against uh, Seattle because they have been – they give up a big play um, here and there. They, they do give up a, a big yards over the air, and that is how the Seahawks will beat you, and that's how they're going to um, get beat inevitably on Sunday. Um, it's, this is going to be an uphill battle, really. But if Washington does win – um, give Ron Rivera the award uh, for coach of the year and you don't have to worry about the Eagles anymore because that's it. That's their division. Uh, yeah, that division is still very, very close. It, 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 it's a three-team race. Honestly, I guess you can throw Dallas in that too at this point. It's, yeah, they're it's, still in it. They're still technically in it, but um, it, it's going to come down to week 17 who wins that division. And it'll be it'll be exciting to see because winner gets a home playoff game. Just like last year, the Eagles won. They had their home playoff game against Seattle. But now on to me. And I'm going to go – we talked about one NFC East team there, which was Steve's team. We're going to go to Joe's team now. And we're going to talk about Cleveland and New York. Um, Browns are favored by minus six and a half. I would take that. I think the Cleveland Browns are going to do pretty well in this game. They held their own against um, Baltimore, even though coming up short. Uh, Cleveland's a very good team. Um, I feel like if – Daniel Jones plays, it could be even a larger margin. If he doesn't play, Giants might keep it close, honestly, because I think the Giants are actually better without Daniel Jones. They've proven over the last couple of weeks that they're a better team. Um, I'll take the over on this one. 44 seems kind of low there. I'll take the over on this one. But, um, no, I like Cleveland to win this game. I think the Giants are going to be able to take away um, Chubb and Hunt for the most part, which True. is very exciting. But we are coming off of a game where the Giants offensive line just got bullied. And they're about uh, to play Miles Garrett. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no. Uh, the hand, the no. Um, this is <laughs> The Browns are the Browns. It's going to be tough to get up after losing such a painful game for the Browns. Um, but they are going to have the advantage of a confident Baker, which goes a long way um, because he is all, a lot of it is, is mental with him. And, and if he's, if he's rolling, if he's feeling good, which I, it seems like he is, he's really feeling himself. That's going to be very exciting. And I, I, I just think that they're going to, again, just like the Cardinals did rough shot right through the giants. I think they're going to cover as well. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think the Browns, uh, the, the giants, the Browns defensive line is just going to, eat alive the Browns offensive line or the Giants offensive line and Daniel Jones is probably going to have like two fumbles three fumbles uh, Miles Garrett could legitimately lock up defensive player of the year this game um, by sacking Daniel Jones like four times 
forcing two forced fumbles and like recovering one like that. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility right now. Um, yeah. The Giants were really, really riding that Seahawks win. And uh, I think they're better when Danny Dimes doesn't play. I, I really do. I think it's time to kind of give it up. Um, yeah. Like he doesn't know how to hold on to a football. Like he no. doesn't, he doesn't know how to get hit and not fumble the ball. No, um, they have to make a move in the off season for sure. There's plenty of free agent quarterbacks that are going to be out there. Um, Dak, Stafford, a bunch of guys. Mariota. Philip could, Rivers. Oh uh, yeah, Philip. <laughs> hey, Philip Rivers to the Giants. You guys want him? I, I think no. No. one no. one key one key thing to look at with this game is James Bradbury is not playing. Who's yes. been yes. arguably the best corner in the game uh, uh, this year? Uh, and I, I think this. This whole Daniel Jones doesn't – they're better without him. I think that Seattle game was a fluke. Uh, it's it's Colt McCoy. You know, I, I don't think he can – we can really say that this franchise would be better with him. And I, I think the the Browns, like you guys said, coming off a very confident win – uh, excuse me, a confident battle yeah. against uh, the Ravens, they, they need a big win here, and this is the perfect team and the perfect time to do it. Uh, I think Evan Engram's questionable too for this game, so – Everything just seems to be favoring the Browns in this matchup. Yeah, no. Um, okay, that did it for that game. Joseph, <laughs> your pick. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. I think I think I'm uh I, I this is probably the easiest upset call um of the week. I'm gonna take the Patriots over the Dolphins. Um I mean this has all of the makings of the, the Patriots game that we have seen Belichick win for years and years and years is prodigy and brian flores um a rookie quarterback um a game against a team that does not really have a very dynamic offense right now this is the type of game that the patriots have been winning all year um patriots win with defensive scores with special teams um with rushing the ball and that's that's where they're going to get Miami. I mean, they're not going to, it doesn't look like they're going to have Devonte Parker, or Grant, Kosicki. I don't know. I, I understand. You don't Dolphins. know who's playing. Like who's, yeah. who's suiting up? Like who's two of throwing to? I don't know what to expect uh, from Miami in this game. And I just, I, the Patriots are going to win. Um, I'm going to take mm-hmm. the under. Uh, that's another clear hit. I, I just, the Patriots are going to win this game and they're going to do it the way they've, they, when they win, the Patriots win this year, it's like grinding the ball out, running special teams, touchdown here and there. That's where they're going to get Miami. That's where they're going to get them. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm scared for Miami, Miami on offense. Um, Cause we just, like you guys said, don't know what's going to go on there. I think the dolphins can hold their own on defense against cam and the Patriots but that's not going to do the job. You have to score points somehow. And I agree with this upset too with you, Joe, that the Patriots are going to beat the Dolphins. Look, we've seen Belichick lock up Justin Herbert uh, as a rookie quarterback. And Justin Herbert has been head, shoulders, knees, and toes better than Tua this year. Um, Tua's like, Tua's been good, but he, he hasn't even come close to what Justin Herbert's done. And Herbert struggled easily had his worst game against Bill Belichick and the Patriots. I don't expect a good game from Tua here. And Miami needs that because like Joe said, all of their playmakers are out. Um, I'm, I'm taking the same bet. I wouldn't, I would take the money line. I wouldn't even take the spread because it's one and a half. So you might as well just take the Patriots on the money line uh, and get that plus money and then hit the under because there's a definite chance this game could be like, 17 to 7 or something like that like it's it's not fun i think miami maybe maybe gets one touchdown in like i i think it's not going to be uh not going to be pretty i i think when you look at i think we're you know we're we're overvaluing this patriots offense here cam noon already has very limited weapons and now you add arguable defensive player of the year with xavian howard on the other side of the ball with uh byron jones they don't throw the ball yeah, they're not they going to throw, throw more than ball. ten times. So they're, do you like? It's just going to be Cam. This is a and really Harris. good defense. This is a really good defense. Yes, it is, and I don't think the Patriots are going to be able to put up very many points. But at the same time, like you guys said, we know Belichick and this defensive guru that Tua might have a, a rough game. 
but I th- I'm gonna say that they they pulled this one out in a much needed victory, hurdling towards the playoffs. I think it's gonna be very low scoring. Uh, I think around like maybe something like 14 to 10, 14, 13, something along those lines. But I think the Dolphins, they, they get this one because they are just more of a complete team. And who who's who's better to know Belichick more than the opposing coach with Brian Flores? Uh, it, it's I it's think versa to too. It out. vice versa, too, in that way. But um, no, yeah. it, it, Bill it, Belichick uh, taught Brian Flores everything he knows, but he didn't teach him everything uh, Bill Belichick knows. There you go. Exactly right there. Um, that, that was Joe's pick, I think. Yes. Yes, that was Joe. So we're on to Jesse now for his pick. All right. <laughs> Philadelphia Eagles, Arizona Cardinals. I think this bet uh, at six and a half for the Cardinals uh, over under 49 and a half. I think this really just comes down to how much are you buying into Jalen Hurts? Um, Because when Jalen Hurts played last week and they played good, they beat the number one team in the NFC. So at that point, the Cardinals being favored six and a half, if this is a totally new Philadelphia Eagles team, I don't think there's a way that you don't take them on this point spread. That being said, if you think that was a flash in the pan, you're absolutely hammering the Cardinals because the Philadelphia Eagles with Carson Wentz all year have looked abysmal. Um, so it really depends. Do you, do you think it's a one game kind of thing? The Saints didn't have any tape on them. They weren't prepared. Or do you think that um, Jalen Hurts is positioned to be the next great quarterback? Um, no, that that's that's exactly it. That's literally it. And um, I'm on the bandwagon. I'm literally on the bandwagon. They made a statement last week against the Saints. Granted, they didn't have Drew Brees, but they did, for the most part, have a lot of their assets playing healthy. Um, I like the Eagles here. I'm taking the Eagles to win this game. It might be my the dumb pick of the week, but uh, Cardinals haven't been the same team since the beginning of the season. They're hovering almost around 500 now. Yeah. It, it, I'm, I'm taking the Eagles all the way here. The, the Eagles here are facing uh, everything that Jalen Hurts is, but better than Kyler Murray, better runner, better passer. Uh, and I, I think Kyler Murray will tall. be able to put the game on his shoulders. Not, not as tall, that's correct. <laughs> both, went to, both Oklahoma boys here, but I, I think Kyler Murray will be able to put the game on the shoulders. I don't see Darius Slay being able to lock up uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Both, both of these defenses are kind of eh. And I, I think if, if that's at that point, I'm taking a little bit more of a veteran in Kyler Murray than than uh, you know a one game starter in Jalen Hurts. No, absolutely, you're you're absolutely right, Steve. Um, I mean, everything you said was 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 right on the head. I mean the the Cardinals have health right now. Um, it seems like Kyler Murray's back to full um, to full strength, and I mean. You're right about Hopkins. I, they surrounded Murray right now with with a lot of weapons, and I don't think the Eagles have the defense to really keep up with that. On, on the flip side, Jalen Hurts uh, won a game at home against Taysom Hill. Very nice, very cool. Um, we I, there, I can't read into that that much. I mean, they were giving the Cardinals a week to prepare. Nothing, no, nothing. Yeah, if I, if I had to if I had to take one, give me the Cardinals. Um, if there's a team that's positioned to play against Jalen Hurts, it should be the Cardinals because they see Kyler Murray in practice every single week. Um, that being said, um, you know, the Eagles did – the offense looked a whole lot better last week with Jalen Hurts. But the defense, uh, they just lost Rodney McLeod, who – was one of the like top five safeties in the league this year. He was playing phenomenally. Yeah. Uh, he tore his ACL. He's out. Darius Slay has not been good all year, period. I mean, and I, I, it might not be his fault. Jim Schwartz has clearly decided he's just their man up corner and he's going to take on the number one and he's not getting help most of the time anyway. Um, but I, if I had to go one, give me the Cardinals. Okay, well, that does it for that one. Um, Steve, you're up. Okay. A lot of games left. Let's go with uh, – let's do it. New York Jets traveling to the West Coast, take on the Rams. Rams minus 17. 43.5 is the over. I, 
I, I'm going to say it confidently. I think the Rams win by more than 17. I think the Rams alone put up 40 points. We saw a embarrassing loss last week to the Seahawks from the Jets where they were – the Seahawks almost put up 40. And the Rams are arguably better than the Seahawks. Uh, Sam Darnold's days are numbered here, and Adam Gase is probably on his way out. Should, just an easy easy win for uh, for the Rams here. And the Jets, they, they want to lose. The Jets fans should want a loss here. They, they want Trevor Lawrence and yeah. Rams with everything here. Yeah, I like the Rams to win, of course. I'm not picking the Jets this week, but uh, Rams to win. I, I don't know if they're to win by 17. Though. Seven, I know if this was last week with the Seahawks, Seahawks won like 30 to 3, it would have covered. But 17 just seems like a lot for the for the National Football League. And it might happen, but I, I just don't think they're going to cover. But um, I'm taking I'm taking the Rams to win easily. Yeah, give me Rams to win. Um 17 is high, but I feel like they'll do it. Uh, the Rams are one of the more consistent offenses in the league. They don't really have that many off games. Um, even when they play good defenses, they seem to put up points, and the Jets aren't a good defense. And the Rams defense is playing better than it has uh, since probably the Super Bowl run that I can remember. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I would I would take the Rams here. Um, the Jets aren't I – ju- I, the Jets aren't scoring a point. Um, I don't think the Jets are going to score. So that leads the question. Do you think that the Rams are going to score more than 17 points? Absolutely. So is it going to be 24, nothing, 33, nothing, 35, nothing. I don't know. Um, that that's the, I mean, the, the question is, the question is how much do the Rams blow them out by in a shutout? I'll say uh, 28, nothing. 28, nothing final. That, honestly, okay. Jets would love it. The more points, the better. The Jets would love it. Well, Jets fans, mm-hmm. not the actual Jets. I bet they kind of want to get a win the team. But uh, it's not going to happen this year, probably. But um, back to me. And I'm going to go with the Lions and the Titans. Titans favored by minus 11. You would, might think that's a lot, minus 11. But there's stuff coming out that Stafford was very limited at practice today. And he's questionable to play on Sunday. Frank Ragnow is out with a, like a sword, like a Fractured, fractured, throat. fractured throat. throat. How? How does that happen? How? Like, does he like sound like the like, he can't talk or something? Like, oh my god! Like, I can't imagine what that is and what that feels like. But hope he gets better. Um, I like the Titans to win for sure. Um, I'll I'll even do the minus. I think they win by eleven too, especially if Stafford's not playing. Uh, Stafford is a big part of that team. As, as long as he's been there, and as long as they've lost a lot of games, Stafford is very very good and very underrated. And not having him is a big, it's a big dud for this team. Um, I'm taking the Titans minus eleven, and I'm probably gonna take the under just because we don't know what we're, what we're gonna expect out of Detroit's offense in this game. Yeah, um, I don't think Detroit's going to have much of an offense. Give me Tennessee. Uh, Detroit's one of those teams that Tennessee's just going to run through. Derrick Henry could easily put up like 200 yards here. Yeah, um, yeah that's that's really what I got. Yeah, yeah we're, we're at the yeah. point of the season where uh, Derrick Henry just is unstoppable. It's something about like these last like five, six weeks that he, he just turns it on. I, I, I'm looking at, like you said, just 200 yards, maybe even three touchdowns. It's going to be a long day for Lions fans. The Lions have no, no path to victory here. This is a, this is just another game where they they just they don't have a chance. Um, if Matt Stafford's not there, I don't know how they're going to to pass against these Titans. This is this has Derrick Henry, two hundred and three touchdowns written all over it, and the question is, can he go for two thousand yards? Well, oh, sorry. We'll see is right, Joe. And that was my last pick of this episode. So, Joe, we're now on to your last pick of this episode. Back, we're back to me. Um, so I'm gonna go. I'll go Jaguars Ravens. Um, that should be that should be a great game. Oh, yeah. Gardner Minshew's back. Gardner Minshew's back in the starting lineup. Cool. Um, <laughs> they're not gonna win. Um, this is this is as good as um the ravens have been playing all year um coming off coming off these last these last two efforts i mean running the ball has been outstanding i jacksonville's not going to stop them absolutely not going to stop them the ravens are going to cover 
Um, they're going to win easily. I don't think Minshew is going to perform well at all. I don't see how he will against the Ravens. Yeah, uh, there's no disagreeing with this one at all. No one should disagree with this. Uh, Ravens, easy win. Jaguars still trying to lose, maybe trying to sneak into that first spot if the Jets ever win. Who knows? But the Jaguars are almost locking up the second pick at this point. So Ravens all the way. Nothing else for me to say. Yeah, it's the Ravens with a huge win last week against the Browns, and they are facing arguably the worst team in the league here. Gardner Minshew does give them a little bit of an opportunity. He's always good for some pretty good games and is able to muster up some points. Uh, James Robinson uh, for them has been incredible, arguably probably third in offensive rookie of the year. And I I don't really see much, maybe 2% chance the the Jaguars can win this one, but I, I, I don't want to see the Ravens take this easy either. They still need to win. Hopefully Lamar stays on the field this time goes to the bathroom before the game um, and it should be a, an easy win for the Ravens. Yeah. Ravens beat up on bad teams a lot. Um, it, it doesn't matter that Gardner Minshew was no. playing. No. Um, I don't know if I like the spread because Jacksonville is such a good team in garbage time, man. For as long as I've been alive, Jacksonville is such a good garbage time team and covering spreads. Um but I would I, I like the Ravens here a lot. Um, I think Lamar is going to do exactly what he did this past week, and he is going to run a lot. Definitely, just run all over the Jaguars who don't even have a defense that much. They trade all their pieces away. But Jesse, your last pick of the episode. Ugh. Um, <laughs> Bears Vikings Vikings favored by three over under forty six. I mean. Do you think Mitch Trubisky is a good quarterback? I don't, but they put up a lot of points on the Texans. Um, and as good as the Vikings defense has been in the past, it's not that good this year. It's much more closer to Houston than it is uh, at to the top of the league. So I don't know. Minnesota runs really hot and cold. They have these games where they're like, oh, they for sure should be in the playoff hunt. And then there's games where they look like, you know, they belong in the XFL. So I don't know. I, I really don't know. I guess I would, I guess I would take the bears plus three here because you just don't know what you're going to get from the Vikings. But I also don't know what I'm going to get from the bears. Is Mitch Trubisky going to come out, not miss a throw and throw two touchdowns, or is he going to come out and miss every throw and throw like two interceptions? Yeah. The way you're questioning yourself there is exactly why I'm not betting on this game. If I was to bet on this game, I'm just staying the hell away from it. It's this team. These teams are very, very similar. It could literally go either way. It's literally a flip of a coin of who wins this game. So uh, I'm going to take the bears too, just because Trubisky looked good, but I, I wouldn't bet on this. I guess I'd take the over in this one just because their both offenses are somewhat decent. Dalvin Cook's a monster, um, but I guess I'll take the Bears to win. No, I I think that the Vikings are gonna are gonna win this one. Um, I, I I just think that there's much more talent for the Vikings on the offensive side of the ball, and um, we we have seen the Bears um, on defense kind of fall a little. Um, you know, victim at times to, to mentally checking out. Um, uh, I think that this is a situation where I think Dalvin Cook is going to absolutely uh, run right through him as, as he's done all year. The Bears and Mitch Trubisky, it's, it's a Jekyll and Hyde situation. I don't think that – I think he's good enough to, to have a great game against the Texans. I think the Vikings are a much tougher opponent, and I, I think that – I mean, they didn't make, they made Tom Brady look good a few times, but they, they really did help hold him in check. I think if, you know, if the field goals go in, it's going to be an easy day for Minnesota. Our right, question for you. Uh, for me, yes. Which one of these four quarterbacks has the highest career passer rating? Dan Marino, Brett Favre, John Elway, Mitch Trubisky. Mitch Trubisky. Mitch Trubisky is correct. Let's go. Just, just thought, I just wanted to throw that in there for you. Um, Trivia guru is, right here. This is a important game. I mean, both of these teams are six and seven, trying to fight for that last wild card spot. But at the same time, you have the Mitch Trubisky led Bears, where Trubisky's fantastic one week, and then the next week he's getting benched for Nick Foles or whoever. But I don't trust Kirk Cousins in the clutch in these big games. So I think the Bears do come out with this one. I think their defense gets to Cousins and forces a lot of turnovers. 
and I, I think Trubisky's going to play okay, but, but lead them to the win. All right, Steve, sticking with you for the last game of the episode and your last pick as well. Okay. Uh, oh, San Francisco ah. 49ers facing the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys plus three, over-unders 45. I don't like that over. Uh, that over 45 seems a lot. Um, I- I'm going to take the under on that. This is a weird matchup where both of these teams are kind of even. You know, Andy Dalton led Cowboys. Nick Mullins led 49ers. I think – Nick Mullins gets the job done here. And I think the Niners are just a more potent offense and a little bit better defense. And I think the coaching situation is much better with San Francisco. And I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to ride on them for this one. I 100% yeah. Agree. yeah. Let's not overrate Dallas because they beat mm-hmm. up on Cincy. Um, uh, since he's no. not good. Um, Dallas. I mean, come on. Like what, what, like what is Dallas good at? Like, what do they do? Well? Losing. It's it's really a generational much. talent running back. <laughs> um, but I I mean like the 49ers are just clearly the better team, even if they're hurt and banged up and their starting quarterbacks not playing, like it doesn't matter. They're just so much better of a team and just so much better of a coach team that yeah, I would easily take the 49ers at minus three. Me too, man. Me too. I think this is an easy one. Um not only did they beat the Bengals last week, the Cowboys, but it was a revenge game too. So there was extra motivation there for Andy oh, Dalton. Baby. So it, 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 there was a lot going into that game and they, they beat them. Yes, they did. But uh, the Niners are a different breed. They're not the Bengals. Granted, the Niners are all, all, they're banked up like they have been all season, but I trust Nick Bones to just to take apart that defense that doesn't exist on Dallas. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, we could see Nick Bones have um, one of his best passing games. Um, this is, I mean, we saw what um, a real rushing attack does to Dallas when they played um, the Ravens. This is this the same type of thing. I mean, they the the 49ers just just pound it, pound it, pound it, and the Cowboys just cannot keep up with that. They're just not nearly that physical. Enjoy it, 49ers. I think easy, easily. Yeah, I think Debo's out too now for this week. So, but that that's whatever. It's not going to do anything. But before we end out this podcast, Jesse, for the last like five or ten minutes or so, has been writing this beautiful list, and I just want to talk about this list. Oh, I, I contributed to it. Oh, you did, you did. So it, it was a good project. Oh, yeah. whoa, we got we got really uh really. I guess kind of bold with what bad means. Yeah, but um, J- Jesse, what, what's your feelings on Ben Roethlisberger this late in the season, and why you kind of I mean, want to replace? I've been said it. I've said it for like a whole year that Ben Roethlisberger is easily the weakest thing on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Um, so I started to write a list of how many bad quarterbacks I would rather have than Ben. Um, and these were just mine. Uh, PJ Walker definitively yeah. uh, was the first one I said. Uh, Marcus Mariota, definitely. Brett Favre, the 42-year-old version, and give me him. If he can stay healthy, definitely taking him over Big Ben. I'd probably take Trubisky because he can run somewhat. I think he'd add a little bit to the offense. Uh, maybe Glennon at this point. I, I think I'd probably take Glennon. Definitely Jameis Winston. By far, Jameis Winston. Um, yeah, and then there's a bunch of lists here that, uh, that I would definitely take. Oh, Ryan Fitzpatrick for sure. Yeah. Um, COVID Cam Newton, I don't know about that one. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, you're Colt making... McCoy, I think at this point, Colt McCoy and Big Ben are the same player. So I think I'd probably <laughs> just side with Big Ben. Um, Russell Gage by far. Uh, Nick Mullins for sure. Alex Smith, absolutely. Jared Lorenzen, no. Blake Bortles, absolutely not. Josh Dobbs, absolutely not. Mid-space Stidham, flight. no. Carson Palmer, Mm, maybe Cardinals. If it's Cardinals, Carson Palmer, sure. Um, yeah, Kurt Warner, AFL stunt, definitely. Uh, and two more nice. quarterbacks I want to bring up that would you rather have, and that's Eli Manning and Phillip Rivers, because that was the same draft class as Big Ben. Like right top- now? Right now, right now. Neither. Neither. I think I think Rivers and Correct. I think Rivers and Ben are the exact same. I think they're the exact same. Like too. the exact same. And Eli actually can't like move. No. Um, so no. yeah, I think yeah. 
Um, yeah, well, that was a little fun at the end of this one, but that does it for this episode of the department podcast. Thank you guys all for listening. Uh, we do appreciate all three of us here and Justin, who is not here, who is probably sleeping on in his dungeon right now after a long couple of days of plowing snow for us on the parkway. So thank you, Justin, for your service. Um, but uh, you guys know where to find us. Subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Leave a like, comment, review, all that stuff. Let us know your predictions. We like interacting with you guys, whether it's in our comments or in our DMs. So you guys could um, find us on our social medias at department underscore pod on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. We have a TLC prediction video coming down, a TLC reaction video coming down for this Sunday's pay-per-view um week 15 we're gonna break down all the games and that then we don't know what we're gonna do after that we haven't discussed it yet the holidays are coming up um Christmas is coming up um I know Quant is coming up the day after we're in the middle of Hanukkah um New Year's Eve New Year's Day so a lot of holidays are coming up we don't know what we're doing for to take a little break or we'll just do a little less episodes than usual so we'll we'll decide about that and we'll let you guys know but stay tuned to all that fun stuff and we'll see you in the next episode